Hey there! Today in English Literature with Susan, I'm here with Ezra Pound's poem In a Station of the Metro. Um, in a Station of the Metro is an example of both an images poem and haiku. Please stay in this video with me so that I will explain all of them, the poem, imagism, haiku, how this poem represents uh, both of these literary uh, systems and devices. Uh, in a station of the metro happened actually in a station of the metro. The story was like that Ezra Pound was in Paris. Ezra Pound uh, was an American who voluntarily chose to live in Europe. So um, he's one of those American expatriates who um, who who traveled to Europe to 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 be at the heart of all those modernist trends and changes. Yes, Ezra Pound is a modernist. And modernism started at the late 19th century, early 20th century. Um, it was a hectic time. Many changes were happening. Many things were renewed. The relationship with the conventions, political conventions, literary conventions was somehow cut or the writers wanted to cut them or to change that relationship anyway. Or uh, we, we can say that, that everything uh, was getting a new shape. Uh, like when Strindberg said, we could never uh, keep the old wine, uh, the, the new wine in the old bottle. So the old bottles were broken, exploded, and new kinds of bottles were shaping poetical shapes, poetical forms and patterns. And when Ezra Pound was asked, what is all modernism about? He said, it's about to make it new. And to make it new is one of those famous, well said, condensedly said mottos of modernism. Uh, well, in a station of the metro is happening in Paris. Ezra Pound was really sitting in a station of the metro. He was looking at the people. Uh, some images came to his mind. He wrote a long poem. He edited and edited and edited and revised and revised and revised till after some months, he could write a very, very, very short poem which was both images and it was written in the form of a haiku. So let us move on to check the background of the poem. So we know that the poem was happening in Paris. Uh, some say it is the first haiku written in English language. Mm, and it is haiku as it is adapted into English language. Notice that the Japanese language and English language belong to two different linguistic categories of languages. The, the, in, in English, we use words, sentences, and things like that. In Japanese, they use syllables. And therefore, we say the Japanese, technically speaking, is a syllabic language. So instead of words, they convey the meaning through the pronunciation of some syllables. Uh, and and you, you will see that, um, or you, you may just guess how this two, these two different systems of language may produce different poetry. And we, we cannot expect that the haiku could be totally represented and totally performed by an English speaking person. But anyway, uh, Pound describes a moment in the underground metro station in Paris in 1912. He suggested that the faces of the individuals in the metro were best put in their poem not with a description, but with an equation. An equation of what? An equation of two images. In, in images, and we do this, that, uh, or they did that, the, the images poets did that. They, they equated one image with another, or they merged two images, or as if we put 
one image over the other image. So when we do that, uh, we make actually a compound uh, and it is very difficult. It, it, it becomes vague and complex. We cannot easily detect the particles and the characteristics of the of each image. So this is happening in, in a kind of condensed uh, it, imagist poem. Uh, let us go to the text of the poem. The poem is so short and to the point and precise that its first line and its title are actually the same line in a station of the metro. The apparition of these faces in the crowd petals on a wet black bow. The two images Ezra Pan is trying to put over one another or to make the equation are the images of a plant under the bow with petals with flowers or blossoms in it which is wet and the underground the dark tunnel of the underground which is like a black bow and it is wet because it is underground and the faces of the people are like the petals so we have this image and uh, and the image of the plant put together and also we have the apparition of these faces because as Rapan is setting and the people are passing by with a rapid pace, a rapid pace. So they are and like apparitions. In other words, we can uh, put these two images together to see Ezra Pound's equation. Uh, we have two black bows and we have the petals which are disappearing in this image or which are big in this other image. And Ezra Pound, who is sitting somewhere, making these images an equation. Now we can go to Imagism. Imagism is a poetical movement which happened shortly at the beginning of the 20th century or what is called modernism. In that, um, in that time of modernism, uh, new forms uh, were being experienced and experimented. And here Ezra Pound is doing the same thing. He, is, mm, he has an experience and he's also experimenting. He has, has an, an, an experience of images and then he's experimenting but putting those images into a new form. So let us see what was imagism. Uh, it was a poetic walk, as we can read, that flourished in England and even more vigorous in America. Many of its pra practitioners were actually Americans, like Ezra Pound, uh, though Ezra Pound didn't live in America. Approximately between the years 1912 and 1917, you see the movement was a short-lived one. But anyway, it was very, mm, let's say, uh, influential. Even today, we can see the traces of imagism in some of the poems which are written. Uh, it was a revolt against what Ezra Pound called rather blurry, messy, sentimentalistic, mannerish poetry at the turn of the century. Ezra Pound somehow provided the manifesto of the imagist movement. He was against the romantic of symbolic poetry in which the images, the expression of the images, were in the, the, the expression of the emotions and the feelings were important. Rather, he prefers a short kind of a poem, which is not mannerish, which is from free as um, free as much as possible from the conventions. And um, it is a poetry belonging to the modern times. Uh, Pound, the first leader of the movement, was succeeded by his co-poet, Emil Lowell. Uh, to credit uh, the presence and the leadership of Emil Lowell, uh, Ezra Pound uh, called the movement uh, some, somehow Im images. Uh, anyway, the relationship between Amy Lowell and Ezra Pound was not always in friendly terms. Um, and if you're interested to see those equations, because uh, it, it, you know, when, when we read about images poetry, we, need, we may need more examples. Or when we think about these images and the vagueness and the complexity, we may need some other poems to be read, to be understood and comprehended. I suggest you to check out my other videos. I will put the link here for you. Uh, anyway, this was an introduction to imagism.
Uh, let's see what are the proposals of the Imagist poets. A poetry which abandons conventional limits in poetic materials and versification. So um, this type of a poem is almost free from the literary traditions, is free to choose its own subjects and to create its own rhythms. Um, you, you can write about any images. We don't have suitable and non-suitable topics here. And the rhythms are there. And the poet can can add his or her rhythms to a poem, regardless of the traditional metrical patterns. And uh, th this kind of a poem can use some common or colloquial examples of language. And it presents an image, vivid, sensory description that is hard, clear, and concentrated. Uh, so, so we have the image and the image and the image, nothing more. Um, the typical images poem is written in free verse. So we, we know that it is, um, it is not following the metric patterns or the rhyme schemes of the traditional English poetry. The poem undertakes to render as precisely, vividly, and tersely as possible. You see these adjectives are very important here and without comment or generalization. So we don't have the commentary. We don't have the expression of the emotions, the feelings we have, or the impressions we have. Rather, we have the mere image and its um, equation maybe with something is the writer's impression impression of visual object or scene so the impressions are not in there often the poet impression is rendered by means of metaphor or by juxtaposing without indicating relationships so the poet is not commenting he's not expressing explaining himself or herself the description of one object with that of a second and diverse object and we have always be careful we have to be careful about the the diversity and sometimes uh, the, uh, let's say, heterogeneity of these images. Uh, therefore, uh, to, to make a point, in, in an images poem, we always have two images, at least two images, which are kind of merging to one another to create a vague one. And about haiku, which was favored by Ezra Pound, he somehow brought this form into English poetry. Um, I told you it is a poetic genre belonging to the Japanese language. Um, haiku, so, is a Japanese poetic form, and we know that Japanese is a syllabic language. A haiku generally, or technically speaking, has 17 syllables, which are rendered in a specific way. We will see in the next slide. Represents the poet's emotional or spiritual response to a natural object or scene, but uh, this response doesn't have any commentary or any kind of personally um, expressed impressions. Its strict original structure is extremely difficult in English. We know for uh, uh, we know we know it already because the two languages are typically or let's say um, technically belonging to two different linguistic categories. Most poets who attempt the haiku in English lose in its rules. Uh, we know again why. It's greatly influenced imagism. So some images through haiku. And so we, we know that it has 17 syllables. Let's see what is the shape of a haiku. Uh, there are three lines. Uh, and in the first line, we have five syllables like this if you want to show the syllables one two three four five in the second line we have seven syllables and the remaining five would shape the last line of the haiku so and uh we know that there are five syllables, seven syllables, and five other syllables, respectively, in each, the, in each of these lines. So it was my explanation of Ezra Pound's In the Station of a Metro and Imagism and Haiku. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope I can see you in my next ones.